Today's weather is rather cold. The maximum temperature is 51 degrees Celsius. And the air pollution within is medium to high. Please remember to wear your mask when you go outside. Because of the global restriction on the use of energy, the government has imposed a series of power cuts on the rotating schedule. Here is the timetable for today's power cuts. Please note the times when there will be no power in your area. Reports are coming in of a fast-moving typhoon in regions north of the city. No deaths have been reported, but certain areas have experienced serious building damages. Many countries around the world, including America, Canada, and France, witnessed by This may seem like an exaggeration. However, if we don't take notice of the problems caused by global warming, this may be reality for people living in Hong Kong 50 years from now. Let's look at the current situation and what is causing this. We all suddenly begin to realize something which we have now referred to as global warming. In this, over the past, maybe just simply half a century, we have noticed a dramatic increase in the Earth's gas temperature, the atmosphere, where we start to use a lot of fossil fuel. Now, that has started to cause a lot of havoc. Carbon dioxide now coming from power plants, from vehicle emission, and from many other sources because we want the energy. We burn the fossil fuel. When we looking at just now the increase of the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration, that actually has somehow a heat trapping effect, and we call it a, a greenhouse effect. Our aim is try to contribute to the air, better air quality in Hong Kong. And since the because bus is one of the major source of emission, when we talk about climate change, CO2 emission, and public bus itself is already very friendly to this um, contribution. The greenhouse effect results in global warming, which affects the polar ice cap and in turn, the rest of the world. In the past, we'll have a lot of ice in the North or in the South Pole. Today, only about 20 years, maybe 25 years, you can see how it has shrunken. The amount of water that is now liberated into the ocean is phenomenal. And that is why even beautiful sceneries are lost. You know, mountains, in Africa, for example, the Kilimanjaro, where you had a lovely snow cap. And then what have you got today? Just a flimsy piece of white. If we're not too over worried at this stage, let us start to worry in 50 years time. When, if we don't curb and stop this global warming, in 50 years, we would expect through the melting of the North and South Pole's ice cap, then the ocean level could rise by easily by 6 meters. When we look at the world around us, the situation is alarming. The demand of energy is increasing every day. With the limited reserves of energy, there is an urge to look for new sources of energy. Otherwise, our world will fall into an awkward situation. And uh, renewable energy actually is try to convert with fossil fuel, which is a non-renewable energy. Renewable energy refers to the fuel which could be regenerated and that we could use uh, uh, in, without, without a fear that that will be totally depleted on Earth. What is being done in Hong Kong to respond to the need for renewable energy sources? Um, CLP Group actually started investment in renewable energy projects since 1997. In 2005, we have set up CLP Renewable, which is specifically for investment in renewable energy uh, projects across Asia Pacific. After the hydro investment, we started investment in different kind of renewable energies. 
And our second investment is in wind power. Wind power, our first wind power project is in Shandong Changdao Island. After investing a lot of wind farm across in India, Australia, and China, we started our third kind of invest,、uh, renewable energy investment, which is biomass. And our first investment in biomass is also in Shandong, in the Boxing County. It supplies electricity to the Boxing County and Shandong province. But besides supplying electricity, it actually provides an extra income stream for the local farmers because we are using the agricultural waste, cotton stock, as our fuel. For liquid wastes such as, for example, for Hong Kong people, we are Chinese. We like the Chinese、um, diet, and therefore we have a lot of very oily foods, and therefore we generate a lot of liquid oily wastes. And these waste cooking oils or pot oil, etc., these wastes could be converted into、uh, biofuel called biodiesels. There is no time constraint for us. To look for new forms of energy, it all depends on how much we can contribute to save this planet. One of the solutions is to recycle waste oil to produce biodiesel fuel, which is clean and efficient. Biodiesel production in Hong Kong does not come easy. As a new fuel, most truck drivers are hesitant to use biodiesel in their diesel engines. However, due to recent soaring oil prices, users are looking for a cheaper alternative. So the market for biodiesel is becoming stronger. Up to now, unlike other developed countries, there are no legislations in Hong Kong to govern the disposal of organic wastes. At present, there are a few small operators who collect waste oils from restaurants and fast food shops. They will simply warm up the waste oils in order to extract any water that has got blended in previously. We prepare to set up collection teams to make these collections ourselves and turn these waste oils into clean, renewable energy. All in all, we are delighted that the Hong Kong government has taken the initiative towards the recycling. Of organic waste in a controlled manner. The fact is that emissions from vehicles cause air pollution. Public opinion demands that authorities do something about this problem. We learned about biodiesel fuel from some environmental protection bodies. We first worried that it may not be powerful enough. However, our catering company was brave enough to try it. It is powerful enough, and we are happy with the results. Furthermore, the biodiesel fuel we're using is actually produced by recycling the canola oil we use. KMB CO2 emission per passenger kilometer in 2007 is only around 38 gram per kilometer passenger. As compared to London transport, they are now about 80 gram per passenger kilometer. In 2006, we introduced the first in Asia, the Euro 4 engine standard, to Hong Kong. In 1998, after a number of measures and trial, we equipped oxidation catalyst uh, exhaust um, device. Into our 2,600 buses, and from 2001, we try to equip with the diesel particulate filter. This device can reduce particulate particulate matter by more than 85 percent. Our truck fleet has been using biodiesel fuel for two years. We realized the difference between biodiesel fuel and Shell and Caltex diesel was not significant. If I had to identify one weakness with biodiesel fuel, it is that it's a little less powerful. For lightweight lorries and four-wheel drive vehicles, there is no obvious difference. Previously, our truck fleet produced lots of black exhaust smoke, but over the past two years, we found none. Biofuel sounds good, but there are still some drawbacks. We need to find other sources of renewable energy, or we should seek to improve what we have now. Either we do these things, 
or we accept a future such as presented in the weather report earlier. What difference can you make? What compromises are you prepared to accept to save the environment? Under any circumstances, we certainly have the responsibility to protect this nature that God created.